afternoon, morning. Um, good to get the first one under our belt. I think we talked last time, there's so many unknowns from ourselves to the opponent. Guys came out and played hard, played fast. Um, thought our defense played at a really high level. We got um, really good field position, certainly in that first half for us, and that can change everything. First quarter, I thought the offense was was doing a nice job in sync, which is uh, which was awesome because uh, you know all the the lack of live reps that we probably did um, during spring ball or spring uh, fall camp um, changes the game, and so it was good to see Jake strike early. And uh, but we got enough on tape that we got a lot of things to clean up, and I think the guys are anxious to do that. What kind of leap did you see Jake? take, especially with the deep ball compared to where he was a year ago? Well, um, yeah, there was improvement for sure. Um, not only to John Ross, but a couple other guys. Um, you know, even one he underthrew, which is something that we're kind of working on in terms of just giving guys a chance to make plays on the ball because it was it, it certainly didn't come off his hand like he wanted it to, but Dante was able to come back and at a minimum, get a pass interference. You know, it's hard to cover those guys one on one out there, whether it's in stride or a little bit short. And just if you time it and get it up appropriately, you know, a lot of times the receivers can make plays on that. So there's there was progress there for sure. You expect anyone to kick it to John Ross again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. I for sure do. Um, I think they will. You know, um, yeah. You mentioned uh, Tristan Piscano the other day, how much of a weapon that had yeah. five touchbacks on his, on his yeah. eight kickoffs. I mean, obviously really negated their, their threat there. How, how important is it to have a guy like that that can... I think, that especially if you're kicking off a lot, um, to have a big leg on the kickoff, boy, that can really, really help you because if you give them enough chances to bring that thing out full speed, everybody's got a pretty good returner and they're going to find a crease sooner or later. And so for Tristan to uh, negate their opportunities to return on us is, I think, really underestimated in, in football. I mean, we, don't, we certainly appreciate it when we see that uh, on the sideline as coaches. And so if he can kind of keep that up and he's got the type of leg that he can do that, sometimes he, he gets a little greedy and tries to overkick it, and that's usually when it doesn't come off as good. But I thought he did a really good job out of the gate. What was your take on the run game overall? Yeah, we got some work to do there. Um, but, you know, I mean, that's that's the style of our offense. I mean, um, if people are going to load up and bring those safeties downhill and try to stop the run, then hopefully we can throw the ball a little bit over their heads. And it's a cat and mouse game. But um, I think we can run the ball better. I would hope so. When, when you look at that, second half and whatnot and, and a lot of people would term that as, as maybe garbage time or, or time where you're just kind of extending the game out how would you when you look at it again on film how meaningful do you feel that that's going to be down the road for especially getting some of those guys in yeah i think tremendous meaningful and i don't look at it at all uh, as uh, meaningless time for sure I mean, these are guys that haven't played a lot of snaps that eventually will play a lot of snaps, so it's good to get their feet wet for some of these guys the first time. But those are like really critical reps to us as much as it is for the starters in terms of our whole program development. And so, I mean, I was thrilled to get those guys in there, but it's not like, oh, that's okay if it doesn't go just right. We, you know, we're going to need those guys sooner than later. And so those are really awesome to get on tape, and we're excited for those guys to play. And... Um, so it's really, really good time, but we obviously got some, some work to do there as well. You mentioned not really you know, having a great idea of what the offensive line is going to look like until they, they go out and do it against another opponent. Just kind of what were your first impressions there? You know, I thought the pass protected really well. I thought that, that pocket was extremely clean most of the time. There was a little bit of pressure, but you're going to get that. But, I mean, I, I thought it was as... Um, as good as it looked overall, um, since since I've seen it, I think Coach Ross has tweaked some things in terms of technique and philosophy on the on the the pocket itself. And there's a couple times there's not people um, 
really close to Jake, and I think I think so. I think the O line did a good job in terms of some pass protection things. I think we spoke about the run game a little bit. Got to, we got to do some things there um, for us to do what we want to do. But um, I think overall the pass protection I thought looked pretty good. So when you, when you, when you got off to the fast start, was it just simply a matter of looking at them very quickly and being able to adjust on the fly and see what they were take, trying to take away, or how much of that did, was that kind of already baked into your uh, script and, and the plays that you wanted to run anyway? Well, I think there there's some plays that we've practiced quite a bit that just didn't handcuff us. We need this certain look for us to have any sort of success. We have a couple answers here, and like the the, the long winning through to Chico, like we said, if we got a matchup, we're going there. If not, he's got a nice progression in the in the play itself. So it was those type of plays. Now, I think what was nice is is the execution was really good. The pass protection was good. You know, Jake throws a really accurate, good deep ball. So I think there was a there was a lot of that going on there. So I think it was planned well by those offensive coaches, Coach Smith and company, and and then it always goes back to you know credit to the players for executing because there's a lot of good stuff that's drawn up that doesn't get executed. So both sides, you know, did a great job with it. When you talk about the deep ball, Chris, it, it seems like in the explanation, maybe post game, it just sounded, and maybe to my ears, this is wrong, but it just sounded as simple as maybe just putting more air under it. And, and what, is it that simple, or, or, or is there more to it? Well, it, um, I think that's one of the elements to it. You still got to be accurate. You can't just throw it up a balloon ball. I mean, there's still, um, you know, is it two safeties, one safety, depending on what you can do, uh, you know, with air on the ball, is it going down the seam? Um, is it going to go outside? Those type of things. And, and it's hard. I mean, you're still trying to throw an accurate ball that turns over. But one of the things that, you know, we kind of think is that a little more air um, in general allows us um, to have a little more of the other kind of air on the throw where the receiver can adjust to it. And that's just a personal philosophy. You know, it's just to me, it's just really frustrating. Um, when we run a guy downfield and the ball gets thrown out of bounds or we overthrow him by a step and it's like close and they're low percentage throws anyways but i think if we can work on giving those guys a better chance to fight for the ball um you know that's all the quarterback can do is give them a chance if it's on stride and beautiful that that's awesome um but i think we want to give our guys a chance to battle for balls also one quick um comment on the other the question on the fast start when is there been a kind of change philosophy or evolution on scripting and just kind of how teams like to do that nowadays as opposed to maybe, you know, back in the days they had, you know, a set 15, 20 plays or a certain number of plays they wanted to run? And yeah. has that evolved at all or is that is there new I, thinking on that? I, I think it's um, – I don't know what other guys are doing, to tell you the truth. I, th I think that everybody has their openers, whether it's they want to set up other plays, they want to test the defense to see what they're actually giving us um, with a combination of we feel good about us being able to execute these things, like this is our stuff. I can only kind of speak for ourselves on that, but I think every offensive coordinator has certainly a plan of some sort of script on, you know, they may be, um, this is what we're going to run as long as we stay in a, a normal down situation and we get second and real long or third down, we're off that script and we get back to it. Uh, I know, um, you know, depending on how deep you go, how many plays you script, um, it might take you a whole quarter to get through that script and it might only be 15 type plays. But, um, and, and it can tweak a little bit from game to game. You know, it's like, I want to set these plays up. You know, we've seen enough tape on these guys that we feel like, um, not that we necessarily have tendencies, but we kind of feel like we know how they line up, certainly these first games. I mean, even with our second game coming up, we have one game, and it looks a little bit different than it did last year, so there's still a lot of unknown. So we got to do what we think we do well in terms of opening plays. What does Nick Harris have that the average freshman offensive lineman doesn't that, that allowed him to, to be in the mix to play just coming out of his first fall camp? Yeah. And I would say this not only about a freshman offensive lineman, I would say a freshman in general. He does not care. He just goes hard. And if he's going to make a mistake, he's going to make it 
And, you know, we tell our guys that all the time, but there's a lot of scheme and different techniques that these guys are getting. And so it's easy to preach that from the coaching standpoint. It's rare when a guy's like, okay. And I think, again, I think he was well coached in high school. And so he's got some pretty good fundamentals and he understands football pretty good. He might not under, and he doesn't understand all of our schemes just yet, but it doesn't matter because he's going to block somebody, even if it's the wrong guy. And we can live with that, we'll clean that up. At what point did you kind of look at him and say like, okay, this, this guy's probably gonna play this year? Um, I think it was probably the second time we, you know, maybe our first big scrimmage or second time we had some real kind of live reps when we put him in there. And I hadn't even talked to uh, Coach Ross and I didn't even, really have a conversation I was watching the tape and I saw him in there with the twos and I was almost going to put the clicker down and go what's he doing with the twos and then I watched 10 plays and I went oh I get why he's with the twos I mean it was really apparent just how he plays Chris what was your take on the execution of the inside screen play and also the couple times you went to the wildcat formation there um yep I think the I think we had some things in the wildcat formation that we just kind of misread. That's my first thing, and those screens are always going to be hit and miss. Um, that's how it is, you know. You got to spread the defense out, and you got to get them running and chasing, and you know it's a lot of like, uh, similar philosophy with some of the sweep type stuff. Um, there's usually a, a compliment that comes with it, but it's about trying to create space and have defensive linemen running and. And they're going to be a little bit like a deep ball. They're going to be hit and miss. That's how screens are. Um, and they defended it. You know, they defended it pretty good. They had some safeties come down a little bit low. And one of the defensive linemen reacted well. And so they played it. They played it better than, um, you know, than we were able to execute it. Chris, you're, you're real dominant on defense, obviously. Uh, playing a lot of zone with, with the, the strength of the secondary. Do you talk about uh, uh, taking a longer look at the man packages, the pressure packages, or, or philosophically, are you just, hey, we want to keep things in front of us? We play a lot of man. We play a lot of man coverage, probably more than most. So we'll mix it up, but we think of ourselves as, you know, a lot of big man, man, man team. Yeah, and so like everything, we'll always try to counter and not make ourselves so predictable. But, um, you know, we want to make sure that we can let our guys play fast and, not have them overthink things. I think that's one of the things that those guys have done so well, those defensive coaches, is they really understand what we're trying to do and just let them compete. But there's enough there that it's, you know, hopefully they can't dial us up, um, you know, all the time. When, when games start to get out of hand a little bit like that, Chris, and there's so much time left, do you offensively, defensively, do you start to consciously think about maybe making things more vanilla or trying to maybe hold some things back that you had in the packages that maybe you wanted to try in the first week? Yeah, sometimes we'll hold, we'll hold some things uh, back if we think um, you know, it's not appropriate to show them or call those type of plays, which there's, there's certainly some of that. But we, you know, we have plenty to work on in terms of like getting good at just some of our base stuff. So it's not, it's not like a hard dilemma. You know, we might just say, hey, let's let's just stay away from that and get back to, you know, our base football that we got a lot of work to do on anyways. What are you two and maybe showing some things that the future for example? Yeah. yeah. Um, and then not only just like people, um, you know, everybody has your film. And so, I mean, they got for, you know, since we've been here, everybody's got every play we've run. And so part of it, you know, one of the philosophies is, is like you do enough different things, like good, have it all. You know, you can't prepare for all this stuff. Um, sometimes that's what kind of makes it a little bit easier. You know, on one hand, you don't know what teams are going to do early on, but in some ways it can even help you because you're not chasing ghosts. It's like, this is what we see. This is what we need to prepare for. And so that, that can help you as, as well. In regards to Buddha, it, it might be a hard question to answer, but how, do you have a plan for how you see that evolving on offense? We, we have a plan, um, but it's, it's certainly not set in stone. It's, it's going to evolve. Um, I think each week we come back and address it and we're trying to, you know, it's just, it's, uh, it is really hard to get a guy uh, in the mix, truly in the mix on two sides of the ball 
with just all the things that need to be worked on on one side of the ball each week. And so to throw a guy in there um, and just expect him to get all these little nuances is really hard to do. But I will tell you this, I mean, he is a smart football player and as reliable as anybody we have. So if there's somebody that we can continue to build a package for, and some of that depends on how our younger and newer guys continue to develop and, uh, you know, injuries. So in your history of using two-way players and, and how fair is it for, for him to be used on that side maybe? And does it have to take two, three plays a game, four or five plays a game? I mean, yeah. where do you feel like it's, it's fair to him yeah. to, to put that on? I think it's packages. You know, you give him a few plays. It might be completely different than it was the week before. But, you know, you'd like to get a guy to be able to get into some rhythm as well. And so how many plays is that and how many plays can he handle mentally and um, how much can we use him and not wear him out? I mean, this is, you know, all, all those different things. So it's a little bit more, I mean, it's great to do when you can get it done, but it's just a little bit more complicated than, hey, let's put, uh, let's put him over there and get him the ball as much as we can. Is John at all behind as a, as in his development as a wide receiver, considering the last time he played on the field, he was kind of splitting time between offense and defense two seasons ago? Yeah. So we talked about that before in terms of, um, I don't want to say behind, but I still think he has a lot more to him. Um, I mean, just in terms of even practice reps, to be able to, I mean, he just, he hasn't had a ton of practice reps let alone, I, I even maybe think about that more than the game reps. Um, I mean, some of these guys have had a lot, and I mean, as we all know, to build true skill, it just takes hours and, you know, years of these reps over and over, and he really hasn't had that with us, at least. And so it's been nice to watch him this fall progress, you know, with some detailed route running stuff. I mean, I, I like some of the detailed route running stuff rather than just what everybody else likes to see him run past guys. I mean, I like that too, but I can appreciate some of these in and out of his breaks and, you know, some certain type of catches and you see him progressing on. Is that the, is that the biggest area of improvement for him is those, is that detailed route running, the, the little nuance sort of things? Yeah, and just even scheme. You know, there's a couple things out there scheme-wise that we got to adjust depending on the coverage and look. And, you know, he's still working through some of those things. Chris, you mentioned the offensive line earlier. For a group that hadn't played together until Saturday, to not have one flag on that group, how much does that resonate with you? Well, we didn't have one flag on offense or special teams. And, yeah, and so we were really pleased with that. Um, I don't know if we've ever had – I've ever had that in a first game, you know, to not have somebody jump off sides. Because we, ch we changed our count a lot, our snap count a lot. You don't know that from the stands, but we changed it a lot. And, um, and so to not have somebody jump off sides, not have a receiver misaligned on or off the ball, I mean, it sounds simple, but as we all know, no holding calls. So it was awesome. That was one of the things we did talk about. And it's really always one of our goals to, you know, on special teams to try to be penalty free, which is hard because those blocking the backs and all those type of things come out of nowhere. So we were we were pleased with that. And then the, the, uh, the late hit, I think, was on DJ Beavers. Is that right? What was the lesson there? Yeah. And so, you know, that strike zone on that quarterback is very, very narrow. You can't go anywhere near his head, obviously, and you can't go anywhere near his knees when he's a pocket passer. And so he kind of got pushed and went into it, went too low, and that's what the message is. So it's a great, it's a great clip for all of our, um, all of our guys, and it's something we've talked about. But now we have it on tape and to show them again. And then the the, uh, the defensive holding that wiped out the fumble, I think it was. What was? Uh, yeah. Yeah, one of our DBs grabbed onto one of the receivers, and yeah. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. what, are, what are your initial thoughts about Idaho? Um, still figuring them out. You know, they look a little bit um, like everybody does, a little bit different than they did last year. I mean, they're still doing, um, you know, certainly similar stuff. But, um, you know, on defense, we're still kind of putting that together, and it can be hard after one game. Is that, did they look a little bit different just because of who they played, because they truly have changed? Um, 
and so that's you know we kind of go back to ourselves a little bit of a rules game and we got to know our stuff because they're going to break out we still don't really have strong tendencies on on anybody right now but i think that um coach petrino's doing a good job over there building that program and i think those kids played really like the one thing you can see on that first game is they all played really really hard and you always respect that as a coach and um yeah, and so that's that's where we are with those guys on on Monday. Have you coach Chuck help you out at all? Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, certainly we've talked to him, but we have that tape, and you know sometimes we we might uh, talk to him about what they were trying to do um, more so than maybe you know what Idaho was trying to do, just because sometimes you don't know what they were thinking. Yeah, and so. Yeah, you get a a little bit of help, but sometimes, I mean, you just got to put the tape on and make your own decisions. Is that a rivalry you enjoyed over the years when, when you were at Boise? Yeah, I think, you know, you always enjoy enjoy your rivalry games, and certainly when it was at um, Boise, that was a that was a big, that was when we first got there way back when, when I came there in 2001, that was like, you know, same old thing. If you only win one game, it needs to be that game, and like so you're good if we win one game well not really but if you're just going to win one it needs to be that one and so you know and that thing's flip flap back and forth over the years the Boise were you know Idaho had Boise's number for a while and then we had theirs and, and then the last couple of years we didn't play them so but it, it you know I think when you're in state there that's always a big thing Chris you talked about the um the run game, they talk of the, of the play of the offensive line. Can you talk about the de uh, their running backs in terms of their decision making, how they hit the line, and pass protection? Our, our, our running backs? backs? Yep. Um, yeah, I thought they were. I, I thought they were pretty good. I thought our pass protection out of the running backs was was real good. Um, I'm always, for the most part. I'm always impressed with our running backs, how they pass protect, you know, how they pass pro. I think Coach Bonifa spends a lot of time on that, and those guys take that. It's very, very serious. And I think they do a good job. Some of the guys are, you know, LeVon's a little more stout where he can go attack guys more, and some of these other guys got to mix it up in terms of cutting guys and taking them up top. And But I think they're, they were really assignment solid. And I thought, you know, I talk about the old line and the pass pro, the backs are usually involved in that somehow, some way, and I thought they did a good job. Running the ball, fine increases. Uh, I thought it was good for game one. I mean, I mean, I think that's the whole game at the running back position is what type of vision a guy has. And, and uh, when the bullets are flying for real for the first time, there's always going to be a couple runs where you're like, he needs to bounce that or he needs to keep that thing inside. So there was, there was a little bit of that, but I thought they were pretty solid for that first game. Two games outside of yours that I saw where players lost their cool in the USC Alabama game. A Trojan player kicked that Alabama guy in the groin, and then LSU knocked the Wisconsin guy. How much are you constantly kind of referencing plays like that with your guys to make sure they keep their cool? Yeah, uh, and so um, all the time. I mean, our guys practice hard, and so it comes up in practice. And so that's why I make such a huge deal of it in practice. We just don't believe it's like, well, I'm not going to do that in the game. No, I think you have more of a tendency to do it in the game than you would in practice. So if you're doing it in practice, you're certainly telling me you're going to do that in the game. And so we do make a big deal about it all the time. It's a game, you know, and, you, and you're and so emotional. You're playing right to the edge. But it, because it is a game, and we, the game is don't cross the line. They're advantage them, you know, and so – really easy to talk about as a coach um, but there's teachable moments all the time in practice and so it comes up all the time and then when it's in the game and it's not us we're going to still try to learn from others and and uh, you know figure that part of the game out as well but it's it's hard you actually show those plays to the kids those cutoffs um, we show a lot of clips you know we uh during the week we show a lot of clips of other people really we just it has to do with just football intelligence in general like different situations that come up that we have spoke about but maybe it didn't come up in our game that we can show so we're we're continually bringing other tape in to show them does that, does that also involve targeting because it 
that's also one of the big narratives from this yeah. past weekend is a lot of targeting calls and how, how do you feel like that's evolved in terms of the officiating of the game and, and where do you see that going? It's a, hu- it's a huge part of the game and um, just in terms of like emphasis and the days are long over from like complaining about it and not liking it. It's like we just need to figure it out. Uh, we need to teach it different. We need to emphasize it more. And with all that being said, there's still going to be some of that because guys just, you know, especially those passes over the middle into the, you know, all of a sudden the guy went down or he went up and the DB's trying to just gauge, even if he is on the strike zone where it should be, those last fractions of seconds adjustments and all of a sudden, and it is what it is because if we're going to try to make this game better and safer, it's part of the game now. And so we will bring in clips. And we've already done that this we did it uh, even before we played on a couple games that were played, and we'll continue to bring them in. And just in terms of, are, are you happy where the culture is now with you guys that that you guys can focus on this as just another week as opposed to on the outside? Mm-hmm. People would look at this as maybe a, a lull in the schedule or because you're not playing power conference teams and th- that kind of thing? Um, I mean, we, we we're pleased with our you know, the development of all those things, but it's always hard work in progress. Um, it doesn't It doesn't matter who we play. It doesn't matter what the score is um, for us or against us. It is always about us and how are we going to practice, how are we going to conduct ourselves, how are we going to execute. It just, that, that's, that's irrelevant. And that's really the message that these guys are getting. You know, we don't even think like you were just talking right there. That, that has nothing to do with anything. It's like, are we, are we at the standard that we think we should be at in terms of our preparation, how hard we play, um, how we do things in the locker room and all those type of things. That's what this thing's all about. And, and to never lose focus of that, depending if we win, if we lose, whatever. And you feel good that they've gotten that message? No, uh, we're, we're getting there. I don't think you're ever there. You know, I think that is, has to be like, you know, coached and emphasized and talked about in every single day that we're together. Coach, is, uh, is Jalen Johnson a long-term thing? He's not. Yep. Is it, is it Pacelli or Pacelli? Pacelli. I like his game. You know, we thought he was doing a good job um, in the springtime, and he's had a Pretty good fall camp um, of getting better, and it's nice to see him game one make some plays. But it's not surprising because, again, usually when those guys practice at a high level, it shows up in the games, and it did for him. Good. Thanks, guys.